Well, I am here today with what I would call the queen of communications in Austin, Texas, <laughs> the founder and CEO of uh, Elizabeth Christian Public Relations, who happens to be a worst PR firm and great partner. Elizabeth, thanks for hanging out with me today. So fun. Thank you. It was a good excuse yeah. to, you know, get dressed up a little bit. No doubt. Yes, yes. Um, well, I want to talk a little bit about, as a communications expert, helping agents walk through what are probably difficult conversations about what's happening in the market right now, cutting through the noise. You know, how would you advise them just generally to be communicating in a time that's a little bit chaotic? You know, if ever there were a crisis, this is a crisis. So yeah. we think we thought we've seen bad times before. This is a tough one. And so first of all, I just applaud realtors because they are essential people to so many of us in this world. Yeah, they yes. are just plowing ahead with their jobs, doing the things that people need, which is finding, selling or buying a new home. So good for you. Here's the thing during a crisis is that cool heads win in a crisis. If you're trying to, you know, cut through the clutter, your clients are in a panic, maybe they're best friend just got COVID. You never know in this world what's happening with folks, but they've still got to make decisions that affect y'all. And I think that's why it's clearly um, important that y'all are considered essential workers um, yeah. is because you are in that situation with folks. You know, just take a deep breath. Emily, that's the thing I would recommend the most. Take yeah. a deep breath and say, what do I need to really say now to clarify things and not just pour gasoline on a fire? Yeah, no, I think that's such a great point too about this business is already a relatively emotional one. These are many times people's greatest life purchase. It's their home. It's their home means a lot more than it used to now that we're stuck there all the time. And then yes, there's this, all of these peripheral impacts of COVID that are just, it's creating so much angst around every hard conversation. Um, so that, that makes a lot of sense to me. What's the right way to break hard news to a client? Maybe if they are, have an over expectation about what the market is doing or what their house is selling for, how do they, how do you approach that? Well, first of all, I think that the best thing you can do is address the hard news. You know, don't just kind of hope it will go away. I think that's kind of a human tendency is to think, well, I'll tell them tomorrow. I have almost always found that if the minute you know something is off or that you need to convey it, just go ahead and get it over with and do it. And yeah. do this thing kind of called a good news, bad news sandwich, where you lead with some good news. Um, you know, the, the great news is that homes are moving in your neighborhood. This is wonderful. Um, bad news is that the prices are not holding up at the point that you thought that you were going to get. So let's talk about a realistic price because the problem with overpricing, as everyone knows, is that it sits on the market. And then if you have to cut the price, it looks like something's wrong. Then end up with some good news. But here's the good yeah. news. We're finding that the banks are moving very fast with loans. We're, we're able to da, 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 you know, figure out something so that you can kind of soften the blow, but go for it and be as specific as you can. You will not regret not having to double back and say, you remember when I told you I thought we could get that price? I, I don't think we can. So yeah, I yeah. Kind of go for it. It's an interesting market too because there is a lot of good news. You know, there's uh, good news on the front with regards to mortgage rates still still being at super historic lows. Um, good news with regards to the amount of demand that still exists in our market, and the drivers of our local economy are still relatively intact, which is great news. Um, but I think that realtors are still having to combat. Um, business development while having sensitivity to the environment and not appearing tone deaf? You know, how, how do they walk that line so that they're doing what they do and motivating people, but not pushing them past their comfort zone? Well, I think, you know, a good bellwether in that is to look at the Austin Board of Realtors newest media campaign and kind of reflect that because I think you guys are thinking through the messaging so carefully that if your members can pick up on that and play to that and you're finding that it's a decent time for a little bit of humor yeah maybe it's time for them to try a little soft warm humor never ever mean um, yeah yeah if it's time to be really serious you know knock off the humor let's go with serious watch for also kind of having posts scheduled to post so because if something really goes bad and you've got some chirpy, so cheerful post coming up that you forgot to take down, that can look really bad. So yeah. I think it's mainly look at somebody you trust. What's the tone? How are they talking? I, I'm going to reflect that in my tone. Yeah, I think that's a great point too. Realtors are uh, oftentimes really good at batch work when it comes to their communications. I mean, social is everything. And 
automated social social posts makes it easier to manage, but they do need to so acutely manage their communications right now because as we know, things are changing hour to hour on a dime. You, you don't want to be the one that is tone deaf because I think that's the fastest way to turn people off right now is to be business first and human second. Um, it, so it is a time to be humane, yeah. And words matter, Emily, right? I mean, yeah, they, yeah. We're, not, we're all being so careful. Things we didn't used to think about, or eat, we just said it. Um, yeah. You just should not do that anymore. Have five people read anything that's important to your business. Really check it. Check your own, right. your own gut and make sure that you're not making mistakes because one little word out wrong on social can stick around for a while. That's a great point. Um, you know, one thing that people may not know is that ECPR is also the PR firm of record for uh, St. David's Health. And so I think it's interesting that you're working with a partner literally on the front lines of this issue. What do you feel like you're learning just in helping guide them that we need to know? Well, again, it's transparency matters. People yeah. know when you are not being transparent and it just doesn't work. And I think so with a wonderful company like St. David's Healthcare, they are as absolutely transparent as they can be in terms of, you know, who can still come, what they're doing in terms of safety, uh, the, the operations, the elected. Sometimes it's kind of bad to call things elective when if you've got a broken hip, yeah. then all that elective. But, you know, really working with some compassion to make sure people mm -hmm. understand what they can what they can expect at a hospital. How that translates to a realtor is, of course, prep your clients. What are, at the first meeting? What are you going to expect from this? How am I going to walk people through your house if you're a seller? Mm -hmm. You're a yeah. buyer. You know, you want me to, to work with you. Am I going to drive you around in my car? Probably not, but you can follow me and we're all going to wear masks and we're going to do this and that. Prep them so that nothing is a surprise. That's the thing. Surprises yes. are brutal. Yeah. So transparency being really forthright, setting expectations, um, help safeguard against there being chaos or drama related to all of these interactions later. And that makes a lot of sense. That's well, right. um, as an extension of the St. David's Health team, let me thank you and for your work in helping support them and the hard work that they're doing at this time too, because it's been rough. Well, it has so been fun. rough for them. Uh, they are working 24 seven as are all the healthcare, all the healthcare providers, all the front no doubt. Line, you know, yeah. healthcare heroes. They really are. So, yeah, yeah. Well, Elizabeth, I know that this will be helpful for our team. We're really excited to just continue to push our members to do what they do and not stand in fear right now. It's such a hard time, but there's a lot of opportunity too. And they need to remember that that's opportunity both for their clients and for them to continue to build their business and do it in a way that's safe and, and puts, um, you know, human needs first. So well, thank you so much for joining me. It's a pleasure. And don't be afraid to market. Downtimes are when yeah. people market the best and then they emerge from that stronger than ever. So good no luck. No doubt. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks so much. Bye.